Hello and welcome to another Battle Games in Middle Earth tutorial. As you may have guessed from that intro, this is a tutorial centred on the epic task of building Forge World's Mummock War Leader. It's an awesome model, and I'll admit it really does capture the character of that guy AMF faces off against. Ooh, I just love that bit. But I'll be honest, it's the most fiddly model I've ever ever had the displeasure of building. And I hate the building of models at the best of times. I love painting and I love gaming, but sticking fiddly spears and heads on things is about as frustrating as it can get, so I really try and avoid building models if I can. But this one, well, no chance. Luckily, I knew it would be the case in advance, hence me filming it. I don't usually do the assembly of models, but I thought this could have a few nuggets of intrigue for people. So here for your amusement are the five things not to do when building a Mummock war leader. I started off well. I took the main olifant body and legs off the sprue and got to work really clearing off any mould lines or flash from the sprue. To be honest, there wasn't a lot, but there were a few nobbles which would have made sticking together a right pain, so really well worth doing it. Which brings me nicely to... Dum dum da! Mistake number one. Although I was aware of the camera running out of memory, I really needed to leave way more time for each part to stick together. If you press them together good and properly using plastic glue, it'll fill the gaps I ended up filling with green stuff later. So that's my first tip. Take your time and really press those joins together when you're gluing them. Save you a lot of time later. Having said that, the early stages of Mummock assembly went well. It's not exactly harad. Hard, hard, no. The camera ran out of battery while I stuck the head and tusks on, but it's fairly straightforward. Just don't forget to leave the plastic main tusks and ears off because of the Mummock War Leader special bits. I'll do those later. So then I left the Oliphant itself to one side for the glue to harden a bit whilst I worked on the Howder. I started by clipping the flash off and scraping away the mould lines, then once that's done, I started assembling the second level of the Howder. I know what you're thinking, how do you do that? nailing these puns. Well, the key here is to dry fit the joints before you get plastic glue goop everywhere. And actually, it worked really well in the end. It's a bit fiddly getting the struts at the ends to line up properly, but I found that once the two side ones are in, you can easily wobble the, la the, the end ones into place before the glue starts to harden. The trick I found on previous mummocks is to make sure the howder is all lined up, so while the glue is still wet, I just wobbled it into place to make sure it's all straight on the vertical axis. The next part really frustrated me. The baskets on the side of the mummock proved tricky, and not because I was rubbish or anything, but purely because they're not designed to fit perfectly. There were gaps there to show you that the hard plastic outsides were actually made of material. So don't be a basket case on the side baskets, just stick them on with a few gaps in there and they'll be fine. Uh, if anything looks weird, later I'm sure we can cover it up with green stuff. Now, the second mistake I made is a painful one. Yep, that's right, and you can see why now. Ouch! Action replay! Yeah, that was painful. It hurt me right in the hobby. So I'd recommend just using some blue tack to stick it down on the table you're working on or onto the base. Though don't glue it onto the base. It'll be a pain to paint that and the elephant with the base attached. So I uh, used some blue tack. I would definitely recommend using some blue tack to attach it to the table. There I used a bit of super glue to help hold the joins in place because the glue had gone a bit funny whilst I fixed the opposite side. Now the howder and the majority of the oliphant are done, I started working on the platform on the front, which I'll be honest provided some pretty annoying problems. Unfortunately the memory ran out for this bit, which would really help work out what I did wrong, but I'd recommend blue tacking it in place before gluing it, because mine was a little too far back, the howder ends up in the wrong place, ugh, more on that mess later. Now onto the actual new stuff. 
The War Leader upgrades come as part of a separate box, though at the moment they're sold only as one item, but I'm sure that will change eventually. So before I began assembly with the uh, War Leader add-ons, I soaked everything in a bath of warm water and soap and scrubbed each bit with a toothbrush to clean off the releasing agent. That can make it hard to glue and paint. Then I read the instructions very carefully. That's really important, especially on this bit, because some of the spikes are very fiddly and difficult to glue. So if you got them in the wrong place, it really could mess the lot up and look a bit weird. It's a very fiddly job, this, so most of it really had to be done right up to my face. So I'm apologies, but not much of it's on camera. But uh, as a tip, just take your time and really consult the guide every single time you're using a spike to make sure you're using the right spikes in the right gaps. From what I gather, they don't all fit in every gap. Um, I think you could get away with swapping a couple over, but just worth knowing. I also filed all of them down to be perfect and fit them in the gaps. Also, I'd highly recommend using some sort of super glue activator. Uh, it's so much easier to glue things together using it. It makes the glue dry instantly if you've never used it. And I was unconvinced when I first got it, but I can tell you I haven't been able to survive without it since. Now we're coming to the end of the easy stuff. The trunk goes on fairly easily and so do the tusks. The next thing though really does not. So make sure you have the right war leader. The kit comes with two, one a foot in case your mimic dies and he survives somehow, and the other for the beast itself. I assembled the foot version first, which was easy as pie, but on the mimic, oh man was this not easy. So the mistake I made here with this guy was I glued the arm on first, before the rope and the ear was in place. It makes it incredibly difficult to do. I was amazed I didn't snap the rope off, if I'm honest, while I rejigged everything around a couple of times. But as you can see, this is where mistake two comes into play again. The mummock is spinning like Gandalf when he was fighting Saruman in Orthanc, so stick it down on the table. I can't stress that enough, it'll make it a hell of a lot easier to do fiddly things like this. So just here, you can see why it's all going to go wrong very soon. The ward leader's rope is attached to the ear, but he's hovering off the edge of the front platform. That's because of I glued the arm in place first. So I should have known here that it wasn't going to work. So when I put the howler on behind it, the driver, well, he was going to have an uncomfortable ride with a spike right up his jacksy. So I start again. I snap all the bits off, I scrape the glue off, and I try to remedy it. Now, with that all sorted, in quotes, I try again and just want to reiterate how much more helpful it would have been if it was stuck down in some way. Really, that is the main tip to take away here, if you're ever working on a mummock. Anyway, I eventually crack through it all and get the guy attached to the front there. And that's it all done. Then I used liquid green stuff to go around filling the gaps in joins. Again, back to number one, I probably wouldn't have had to have done this stage if I hadn't made the mistake earlier on and not pressed the legs together when I was gluing them together. But I come back to glue the howder on and guess what? It still doesn't fit. He's on a little bit wonky so the at the uh, the point of the front of the howder would have to be on a bit skew with. So uh, at this stage, I must be honest, I was really frustrated. I should have checked it again after I attached the leader to the thingy again. So basically, massive fail. I needed tea and a lot of it very quickly. But in the end, I just thought, ah, oh, to the hell with it. The howder was going on because I'd had enough with the fiddling. So uh, it might not have been quite in line with the side baskets, but 
I didn't really matter and at this point I'd run out of tea so I just couldn't face any more. So that's basically it. I was going to try and put the little tiny struts on as well but they actually make no difference to the look of the model and at this point I was relieved enough to have the war leader and the howder attached so I thought screw it I'm not going to have these tiny little things but you can do it if you fancy it. So there you have it, five mistakes I made while building a Mummock war leader. I finished it off by sticking Bluetack in the footprints of the base and then spray painting it and the Mummock itself with black spray paint. And I will return with an epic painting tutorial for how I tackled the Mummock war leader, if I can ever manage to get such a mammoth task edited. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did hit that subscribe button and feel free to leave a comment below. I always answer any questions and comments you have as well as some criticisms as well. Until next time, may your dice ever roll sixes. Except for